Today, we will talk about gearing ratios and how they work. Gearing ratios compare the owner's equity to debt or funds borrowed by a company. These ratios measure the entity's financial leverage, showing how much of a firm's activities are funded by shareholders' funds versus creditors' funds. The most well-known gearing ratios include the debt-to-equity ratio, times interest earned, equity ratio, and debt ratio. A higher gearing ratio means a company has a higher degree of financial leverage, making it more susceptible to downturns in the economy and the business cycle. Financial institutions use gearing ratio calculations when deciding whether to issue loans, and internal management uses gearing ratios to analyze future cash flows and leverage. A high gearing ratio typically indicates a high degree of leverage, although this does not always indicate a company is in poor financial condition. Instead, companies with high gearing ratios have a riskier financing structure. Regulated entities, companies in monopolistic situations, and those using expensive fixed assets typically operate with higher gearing ratios. For example, if a company has a debt ratio of 0.6, it is more meaningful to benchmark this figure against another company in the same industry. Comparing gearing ratios to each other provides valuable information. When the industry average ratio result is 0.8, and the competition's gearing ratio result is 0.9, a company with a 0.3 ratio is performing well in its industry. Here are three key takeaways. 1. Gearing ratios are a group of financial metrics that compare shareholders' equity to company debt in various ways to assess the company's amount of leverage and financial stability. 2. Gearing is a measure of how much of a company's operations are funded using debt versus the funding received from shareholders as equity. 3. Gearing ratios have more meaning when they are compared against the gearing ratios of other companies in the same industry. Hope this would help. Thanks for watching.